All right, let's go ahead and do some more patrolling around the ocean here so we can find some more enemies, which we did. Okay, visibility is superb, which means we're in the middle of daylight, which is just after noon, so that makes sense. Let's engage this target. All right, let's take a look through the periscope since we're underwater. When it's usually when, when uh, your uh, visibility is superb, it'll always start underwater. If visibility is poor, it'll start you on the surface. All right, our target is two destroyers and a troop transport. Uh, again, I only know that because I, just, I know this game well enough. But if you're curious, you come over here to this ship here. Let's lock on. I think that is a double D destroyer. So let's check the book. Let's go down to the destroyers. That is a double D destroyer, just like I said. Now let's take off the book and let's look at the other one, which I think is also a double D destroyer. Yeah, that's a double D destroyer. All right, let's pull up the book. That's a destroyer. All right. What I want to do is turn toward them. Actually, no, I'm, I'm, actually my speed, my direction is fine now. What I want to do is I'm going to this, this here's where I want to use a a normally use a normally not good strategy. I'm going to surface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire my deck gun in their direction to get their attention to bring them toward me. I'm not good at shooting from long range like this. If I were to try to fire from long range like this, I will likely miss with my torpedoes. So to save my torpedoes, I'm going to go right at them. When I get within 4,000 yards, which is your maximum range for your deck guns, you can't fire at any target beyond 4,000 yards. Once I get under 4,000 yards, I'm going to fire my deck gun in their direction. Whether I hit them or not, I don't care. Once I hit, once I fire the gun, it'll draw them toward me. All right, so let's get ready to go ahead and do this. So when we fire, we're going to then crash dive. Oh, they already see me. So let's go ahead and fire our gun. Crash dive, all stop. Once I get under 20 feet, I'm going to go ahead and start ascending slowly to periscope depth. And I want to crash dive because while I'm still within 20 feet, they can still hit me with their, de with their deck guns. All right, two torpedoes away. Let's change targets. Now I want to go ahead. I wanted to crash dive to the uh, to like I said because I want to get below 20 feet as quick as possible. If I dive slowly, they're likely to actually hit me while I'm still trying to submerge. So now with these two guys coming right at me, I should hit them both. One, two, one, two, and they both sank. Perfect. In real life, you would not want to use that strategy because you're you're more likely your crew is more likely to be better at targeting your ships for you. But I'm not very good at targeting from that long range. I fired at ships from that distance before, and they uh, they'll detect my torpedo before it gets close, and they'll accelerate, and that causes me to miss, or they'll turn enough to miss. So now we're ready to go ahead and engage flank speed. We'll go ahead and surface again because we don't really need uh, to worry about torpedoes. Because this guy's uh, a regular troop transport. So I'll lock on. Go ahead and go ahead and blow tanks and surface surface quickly. Once I'm on the surface, switch to F2 and lower my scope so, so a lucky shot doesn't damage me. I'm going to switch to the TBT here. This is like a, a bridge version of the periscope. Only this view and the bridge cannot be used from, the, from underwater. So if your depth is one or deeper, you cannot use these views. All right, let's fire. I use plus and minus to adjust my deck gun, as you see at the top of the screen here. The deck gun is at minus three, and it splashed, so it means I missed. Let's try, let's try minus one. All right, we hit it dead on. You see that, split, that explosion right there? It means we hit it. So we're at a perfect angle. We're going to keep firing with the space bar. Basically, we're doing minimal damage to it, but we are hitting it, and we can, and we are dealing damage. Once we get within about a thousand yards, I want to change my gun to plus zero because then I don't want to miss. Because now I'm getting really close to him. Because you can see he's getting bigger. So it's the bridge here. And you see a good broadside view of the ship. These are accurate um, pictures of these ships. This is a troop transport. This is what an actual troop transport looks like or looked like during World War II. So again, points for detail for the accuracy of these games, as far as the as far as the graphics is concerned. That's actually very accurate. All right, he's at course one eight two. So I'm gonna turn to I'm gonna turn due south with him. He's about to come to a stop, so I'm gonna slow down to a slow speed. No, it doesn't matter. He's dead. When he's on fire like that, he'll likely do what he just did there, is explode. Any ship can do that. When they're on fire, they'll do one of two things. They'll either explode like he did, which, which will happen more often on oil tankers, because the fire will obviously catch the oil and explode. 
or the ship's uh, crew will repair the fire. Uh, now, any ship on fire is in danger of being sunk. Any ship that is only smoking with just a black pillar of smoke, they'll never die. You'll have to do more damage to them in order to sink them. All right, let's keep on going. I usually, like like you saw in the situation, I didn't use any torpedoes against the troop ship. I like doing that under normal circumstances because it saves my torpedoes for large targets like this. And let's hope that we have another big target with lots of... Nope, we did not. We didn't get lots of carriers or anything. What we got was a troop ship. This time, instead of a medium target, it's a large target, and here's why. That's a full ship. I'm going to use my deck gun again because I'm in 300 yards away. I don't want to run into him, so okay, yeah, we'll be fine. Well, yeah, we'll be fine. <clears throat> we can actually collide with enemy ships, and the problem with colliding is you'll take a lot of damage, they'll take none. You'll take a lot of damage, you'll likely lose, um, so you'll likely end up damaging something important. You might end up damaging your, um, uh, your, your, your dive planes, um, possibly your periscope, even, though you're on, even if you're on the surface, you could damage your periscope. Um, so you want to avoid collisions with ships as much as possible. When you collide with a ship, uh, collide with an enemy ship, you'll automatically begin diving, I think even crash diving, and you'll, you'll, your speed will automatically drop to two knots. It's just kind of this is kind of the way the, the the game works. If you ever run into something, you will start crash diving and stop to drop to two knots at, at forward speed. All right, we have thirty days of fuel left, and we still have four torpedoes in the stern. But that's all. Ugh. Hope we don't come across anything too good because I don't have too many torpedoes left. Allied forces have retreated to Bataan in the Philippines. New submarine bases are available at Fremantle on, near Perth on the west coast of Australia. So if you're down here by uh, uh, Manila and stuff, you have a new base down there. War patrols will now be authorized for the Java Sea Zone. And Celebes. Alright. Okay. So basically that's all the war patrol is. Just kind of floating around. Random encounters with uh, enemy vessels. You don't have to worry about these red dots here. These are these are enemy bases. You can't port at them, and you can't do anything about it. You can even hover around them all day long. You'll never encounter anything. You likely won't encounter anything near them. Or the encounter rate doesn't go up. Let me put it that way. All right, what we got here? Another large target. All right, let's see what this is. Oh, stop. All right, we're underwater, which is good. So this is, this is a big convoy. Wow, and there's a battleship right there. That is... Right there, this one right here that I'm looking at, that is a battleship. Who baby. Who baby. Okay. All right, here's a problem. We need to back up. Oh, we need to back up. Because this ship right here is going to be a big problem for you to Texas. There's also a cruiser out there, too. The, hit, the, the battleship is the dangerous one. Or, or there's, there's actually a target I want to hit. And that fucker's gonna see me. Turn, turn, turn. Get away, get away. Nope, he saw me. Turn, bitch, turn. Eh. Okay, he dropped up charge, but we didn't collide. That's fine. That's fine. I might get lucky. I might get lucky here. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to fire all four of my my stern torpedoes at the battleship. I gotta try to do it before he gets away. Because now that now that he's seen me, all the other ships are gonna try to get away at maximum speed because they're not they're not uh, submarine warships. So they'll try to get away. All right. That's all four of my stern torpedoes. Okay, they got around the cruiser. I think they got around that ship there. Right, down scope, crash dive, all stop. That's all I can do. Nothing more I can do at this point. All right, 100 feet is deep enough. Come on, come on, torpedoes. All right, two, three, four, all four torpedoes hit something. Excellent. Now the two ships that are still moving to the southeast, those are anti those are not anti submarine ships. Shit. So uh, um, that's why they're running. Okay. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Go. The only thing I can do at this point, I can't, I'm not going to be able to shoot these guys. There are way too many uh, anti-submarine ships out here for me to handle, especially since I have no torpedoes left. So all I can do is try to run. I'll stop. All 
Okay, I took a little damage from that uh, from those um, depth charges. Let's see what happened. Anything? Okay, I only just took 15 points of damage. Nothing critical. Okay, now what could happen here is I let them float around me for for some time until they finally realize that I'm not here and they'll just give up. Or I could let them, let them possibly bomb me one more time. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to flank speed and even get close. Alright. That was going to catch me, so let's stop there. And let's do this. Let's see what happens if I launch the debris now. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll think I am dead. I think it worked. Yeah, they're not turning back. Yeah, they think they, they think I'm dead. They're retreating or they're they're falling back. They they think I'm dead. Okay, which which is fine. There's nothing I can do. There's no way I can take on four destroyers without torpedoes. Those are the, those are the kind of vessels I will not engage with my deck gun alone. I really, really hope that I got that 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 battleship at least. I really hope that battleship sunk. If that battleship is only damaged, I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be as a battleship is another ship I don't want to take on on the surface. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of head south, which is the general direction. I'm gonna go ahead and go to periscope depth. All right, center of the rudder here. Those guys are going to be getting out of sight soon. Let's speed up the game a little bit so they do get out of sight. All right, periscope depth. And yeah, there goes the other sh right down there at the bottom. We'll see the two ships still going southeast. That's the two. Uh, the, the, they look like cruisers. I think I did a really good good look at them as I was focused on the battleship. Yeah. If I had more torpedoes, I might have been able to fire enough of a spread. I could have probably hit the cruisers, at least slowed them down, so I could have caught them. But the battleship, I, I'm pretty sure I got. So once he gets out of sight... Which is usually, usually they're out of sight once they're beyond the... There we go. F8 in this battle. Yes. It's retreat, because that's all I could do. I got the, I got the battleship. 30, another 34,000 tons. So again, those uh, battleships are good. Three, yeah, the light cru yeah, the light cruisers are also uh, anti-submarine ships. So the two, the two that escaped, the two that were immediately moving southeast, those were the heavy cruisers. Heavy cruisers do not take on submarines in this game. Uh, light cruiser and the three destroyers, they do. That's why there are four ships surrounding me. But at least I managed to take down the battleship, which is good. Unfortunately, it was only a BB battleship. Now, I say unfortunately there, because BBs are actually the small battleships. <laughs> the BBHs are the super battleships. Those are the larger ones. Those are worth a lot more than 30,000 tons. But that's okay. We still did really good on this run. We're out of torpedoes. There's nothing more for me to do here. I'm gonna, even though i got like a month left of fuel. i got two weeks left of fuel. I'm going to head back to Pearl Harbor now. <laughs> nothing more for me to do. This was actually a really good patrol. A Japanese force is captured by Valak Papan. Like pop that on Borneo. Um, <clears throat> like I said, these encounters and these patrols and the war career are completely randomized. <clears throat> there's been times where I've gone out on a patrol and not encountered anything. There's been times I've gone out on patrol and only encountered small small targets or medium targets. Um, those golden targets that I like to call the the heavy the high value targets, crew uh, heavy. Um, carriers and battleships those are extremely rare to come across um i've had um, patrols and war careers where i never encountered any of those um so if, if you get this game don't guarantee you'll see the same encounters that i did because you won't they're completely randomized as far as where you'll find them and what their fleets will be all right let's keep heading to pearl harbor and let's duck. You want to report? Yes. And you'll see this and battle flags. If you get, if you did a good job, you get, you'll get the little the strip with the full Japanese flags on them. Those are called battle flags. That means you did a good job. Usually, like I said, if you score probably like five thousand tons or more, you're likely to, you're likely to get battle flags. Um, if you don't get battle flags, that means you didn't do a very good job. That means you did actually a very poor job. All right, I got 128,000 tons on this patrol and scored 1,100 points. 
And for that, I got a silver star because I probably scored over 100,000 points. I think 100,000 is the first um, tier or as a minimum tier to get a silver star. If you score below 100,000, you'll get a BSV, Bronze Star for Valor. But anything above 100,000, you'll get a silver star. So that was actually a really good patrol. Okay, and that's it. That's how the patrol works. Now, if you were to do a war career, once you accept your medal, you would actually get an option to repair your submarine, get a new submarine, or go right back out to duty, which all that would happen there is your, uh, your ship would kind of get like a, a small repair, like a brief repair. If you had any major parts broken, they would probably get repaired. Um, if you pick a new submarine, you'd obviously get a new submarine. Um, you, you would get refilled, you know, reloaded on torpedoes. And uh, you would go back out for another war patrol. That's just how that works. Um, since I picked single war patrol, you just go out once, come right back. So war, war career is you go out, come back to port over and over and over again. So that's how that works. So Bonefish got uh, Silver Star. And that's the uh, single war patrol. All right, so we'll go back to the main screen here. And what I'm going to do now is I want to show, since those are randomized, I'm actually going to show now the single battles. The single battles are actually specific scenarios, at least the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those top eight are scenarios where the shipping, the fleets, and the submarine you use are going to be the same every time. How you approach each mission may change, obviously, but um, they'll be the same every time. Um, so, um, let's, we'll, I'll get to that. Um, I'll get to these missions. We'll start with the first one. Uh, whales and Duds. The, the, the last one you see says random engagement. That truly is, like it says, it's random. Um, I don't think it randomly picks one of the top eight. I just think it randomly it, it randomly enters you into a battle. It basically takes you, like kind of like when you're on the, the, the world map, you engage a random battle. It truly is random. It could be a small target. It could be a large target. It doesn't... It, it, it's randomized. So, um... Let's start with the first one, Whales and Duds. 